When Devil May Cry 5 was announced, the series was at a strange crossroads. Back in 2008, the fourth installment into the series came out, and they tried something a little different. They introduced a new main character named Nero. You still played as Dante throughout much of the game, so it wasn't a huge change, but still a very bold decision for a series that's been tried and true throughout the years. Their boldness paid off, as many considered it the best Devil May Cry to that date. In 2013, they thought they could push the envelope even more. DMC Devil May Cry comes out and is way, way different than its predecessor. Dante is back, but with a new Lame. punk rock design. The combat, which was the game's main selling point, was revamped, and a brand new story to boot. These extreme changes got a lot of hate, including a nickname for the reimagined Dante. Dante. Though, in my opinion, I don't think it was a bad game at all, but a Devil May Cry game is a very high bar to reach, and this one just fell short. Now we get to Devil May Cry 5, which falls somewhere in between these previous two, probably closer to the fourth. It takes the most linear approach so far, introduces a new playable character, gives Dante more of a side role and Nero a leading role, and many other small changes. The story starts with a giant demonic beehive threatening the world with humanity on the brink of extinction, and the new kid on the block, V, telling Nero, After all, it was he who took your right arm. Yeah, I've got a score to settle with that son of a bitch. Then he gets his ass kicked pretty damn easily, and as he's getting pulled away by V, he goes, Oh, I'll be back, and this time, it's personal. Then Dante's like, Hey, you beat my women, and only I'm allowed to do that. That's it, guy. This is personal. Then Dante gets his ass kicked so hard that he actually dies, and now only Nero is left to save the day. Then Nero comes back without getting any stronger, gives the demon a paper cut, and then the demon gets real pissed and goes, Hey, that kinda hurt. That's it, now it's personal for me! But then Dante interrupts in his super duper pooper demon form, only to get destroyed yet again. And with Dante finally, finally being dead for good, the demon kind of just gets bored and leaves to go to the store to grab some kind of fruit. Then Dante tries to ask him which Trader Joe's he's going to, but he's already gone. With Dante needing to pick up some Doritos, he goes, Now, it's person. Luckily for them, they are able to track the demon's phone and find him at the really weird Trader Joe's, only to find out that this fight was actually very personal this whole time because the demon was actually no no it couldn't be anyone but him the story itself isn't some masterpiece but it's everything you want from a devil may cry game you get the super cool big bad boss that can't be defeated the world in great peril cool looking demons to kill and cocky characters hey, not taking any of these things seriously with the added bonus to see a return of every character you would want to return. Is that who I think it is? Oh my god, she's she's naked and covered in goo. Oh my oh, oh. Dante's friend. Damn it. Whoa, Trish is in this too? Wait, is she naked? Yes. Oh god, yes. The one character you've always wanted to see naked. We get to see her but Let's talk about what really matters in a game like this, the combat. Throughout the game you play as three characters, Nero, V, and Dante. Each one of them play a little different. Along with his sword and gun, Nero, who lost his demon arm, instead has a collection of various robot arms. Each one equipped with a grappling hook that would even make Scorpion jealous. Get over there! Get over there! Get over there! 
That's not all, each one has a special unique attack, giving the player many options in combat. And the best thing about these arms is how the game doesn't take them seriously, like this pasta breaker, or the sweet surrenderer that does, well, this. Next up is V, who easily has the weirdest combat style in the entire series. V himself isn't much of a fighter, so instead he simultaneously controls three creatures. A crow, a panther, and a giant golem that replaces the double trigger. These creatures can't actually kill the demons, so you use them to weaken your enemies until V has a chance to read them a bedtime story and then stab them to death with his walking cane. To be honest, I still have no idea how to use V. I am no master at this game and my brain is too small to use this guy effectively. Then there's Dante. Now let me show you just how many buttons you need to fully use Dante. Okay, hold on. I need a deep breath. You have four melee weapons and four ranged weapons, three of said weapons having different versions and one other having two modes, and all of which you have an extensive combo list, and you can use the triggers to switch between each weapon, then a special B move which changes based on which style you're using, which you can change on the fly using the D-pad, then of course is double trigger that changes all eight of your weapons and has its own combo list, oh, and you'll need a steering wheel and pedal to control the motorcycle. Phew, okay, all right, breathe. Dante is the funnest character hands down and is totally worth the crippling arthritis you'll undeniably get by the end of the game. The last thing I wanted to bring up was how they got rid of destructible environments. With the more linear story, this made a lot more sense and got rid of the tedium that was in the previous installments. Of course, I still can't help myself from seeking out and breaking everything I can find. I'm smashing tables and chairs like a WWE wrestler. I'm destroying cars with motorcycles. I'm even making a mess of family graveyards. Here lies Charles Smith. Caring husband. Loving father. And a true friend to all. May he rest in peace. Fuck you, Charles! <laughs> Devil May Cry 5 is an excellent game that you do not want to miss out on. All in all, it's a game that will make you go. Yeah.